A shooting has rattled a crystal neighborhood. Police found two women dead at a home in what authorities are calling a murder suicide. The incident happened Thursday night around 1140 at a home in the 5100 block of 49th Avenue North. A 62 year old woman and a 73 year old woman were found dead inside the house. Crystal police say both women died from single gunshot wounds. A relative discovered the bodies of the two longtime roommates after going to check on them. Meanwhile, police are now trying to find out the circumstances that led up to the incident. We have had no history with either of them um, or that residence. They were not known to us. Um, the uh, family members that we talked to were, were pretty shocked that this had occurred. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it, it seems pretty, it seems relatively cut and dry what happened, but certainly tragic. Police say there is no danger to the public, and if you have any information on this case, you're asked to call Crystal Police. A Brooklyn Park man is accused in a Brooklyn Center gas station shooting that left the victim mostly paralyzed. 20-year-old Kafuba Fofana is charged with multiple felony counts, including second-degree attempted murder. An amended complaint released this week tacked on additional charges because he suspected of committing the crime for the benefit of a gang. The incident occurred last July in the early morning hours outside of the Speedway gas station on Brooklyn Boulevard. According to the criminal complaint, Fofana followed his target out of the store when numerous shots were fired in the parking lot. The complaint says the juvenile who was shot is now confined to a wheelchair due to his injuries. The global pandemic and supply chain issues are being blamed for the closure of another local restaurant. The owner of Jewel's Cave Diner in New Hope says she can no longer keep operating and is closing for good. Reporter Sonia Goins has more. There we go, guys. Jewel's Cave Diner in New Hope has been serving up home-style meals for the past five years. Anything else for you guys? They've got everything from salads to eggs and hash browns. I love the meatloaf. Jules makes really good meatloaf. Mama's Sloppy Joe's and Mama's Meatloaf, that was the recipes that I grew up on with my mom. Here's that for you. The cafe is so warm and inviting that many customers say they stop in often just to chat. I don't like to be stuck at home, so I come and hang out here. Yeah, I like the fellowship and the, you know, laughter and the just, you know, it's like a family. It's very emotional. I've become very, very close to a lot of our customers. Jewel Polchinik is the owner of the family-owned restaurant. Oh. <laughs> going to miss uh. you so much. But now the cafe is undergoing a major change. Jewel says it's time to turn off the burners for good. We're going to miss it. And I'm going to miss all of my family. It's a move she didn't want to have to make. It's really pretty hard. The restaurant had a tough time keeping up with supply chain issues. We made it through COVID. It's just now to the point where you can't find half the stuff that we need. It's really hard to switch it up with something else because the customers know the difference. Jewel says it was also challenging dealing with staff shortages. It's hard to find cooks nowadays. If someone's sick, we're going to have to shut down because you don't have someone to cover the shifts. The owner says she will miss the customers and the joy they brought to her life. It's just amazing how grateful people are for you, how much love can be actually had. And I can take that home and show that to my kids. January 31st is the last day the restaurant will be open. Jewel says she will cherish the memories. Thank you, everybody, for all your love and support over the years. It's been a very hard decision to decide to sell, but it is what's best for my family right now. In New Hope, Sonia Goins, CCX News. City officials in Brooklyn Center are moving forward with the plan to renovate and expand its community center and build a year-round adventure park. The total cost to build these amenities would be $135 million. Brooklyn Center has put in a request for state bonding dollars to help pay for the project, but the city also wants to implement a sales tax of 0.5%. That sales tax would raise $55 million over 20 years. This week, the Brooklyn Center City Council approved a resolution to ask the state legislature for the authority to implement a local sales tax. If state lawmakers give them the go-ahead, the Brooklyn Center voters would then have to approve the sales tax in a citywide referendum. The soonest the city could possibly implement the sales tax would be in 2024. One of the largest art exhibitions this side of the State Fair is going on right now. Neil Persley has all the details in today's weekend showcase.
This is our annual exhibition, Arts North International. It is a competition open to artists across the globe. I've covered several Arts North International exhibitions at the Hopkins Center for the Arts, and none of them disappoint. In fact, I put this exhibition on par with exhibitions such as the State Fair. It's that good. This year we had more than 800 entries for the show. From those, the jurors chose 158 for display. So it's one of those shows where every piece you'll see exhibits a high degree of skill and quality. It's a show that just making the cut to get in is something to be proud of as an artist. We have work from all over the United States, three provinces of Canada. We have work from China and 42 cities of Minnesota. Some people take in the show in two visits. It uses all the spaces that we have for display, uh, both floors of the lobby gallery as well as the red penning. The exhibition is up through February 12th, so make an effort to stop in and browse the many fine examples of creativity and talent that the Arts North exhibition draws. So we have a best of show where all the artworks were in competition with each other, as well as first through fourth place overall, and then we have individual awards in the separate classes. And there's more at stake than just bragging rights. Over $9,000 in awards uh, given out. There are artist interviews and images on the Hopkins Center website, which might be a great prequel to your in-person visit. For Weekend Showcase in Hopkins, Neil Persley, CCX News. The Nilt St. Margaret's is battling Chaska for first place in Metro West Conference girls basketball. The Red Knights hosted a young Cooper team that is rebuilding this season. The Hawks looking to split the season series with the Red Knights following a 12-point Benilde win in December. BSM's Kendall McGee is left open and drains a three-pointer. The freshman guard scores 18 points in the night. Bree Frazier has been a bright spot for the Hawks this year. Her early three-pointer ties the game. She nets 10 points. Isabella Davison trying to keep Cooper close. She'll hit a three-pointer. The Hawks are down by five. Great job by Benil breaking the press here. Four passes later, and it's a layup plus a foul for Mackenzie Wells as the Red Knights go on a 12-1 scoring run. UConn women's basketball coach Gino Ariyama on the right in the gym, presumably to watch Red Knights guard Olivia Olson. Number one is one of the top sophomores in the country, and she scores here. Then it's Olsen getting the ball and knocking down a mid-range jumper for two more of her game-high 27 points. But it leads by 19 at halftime. Early second half, and Frazier showing no fear, drives it into and past the Red Knights defenders to score. But BSM is able to extend its lead on the strength of another three-pointer from Olsen. The Nilt St. Margaret's goes on to win 61-38. The Red Knights are now 9-1 in the conference and 13-4 overall. The Champlain Park girls basketball team has climbed into the top half of the standings in the Northwest Suburban Conference. The Rebels hosted a good Blaine team Thursday, and Jay Wilcox has the highlights. Champlain Park hosts Blaine in girls basketball. Alicia Bates to Michaela counts for the rainbow three and Arthur Crutch's Rebels lead 12 to 10. Nicole Lillard feeds it inside to Izzy John for two and Champlin Park goes up 24-19. Ava Holman gets it to Amelia Valentino and she splits the defenders and hits the shot. Champlin Park takes a 32-24 lead into the halftime break. Second half and Holman misses on the drive but counts is there for the putback. She scores 16 and the Rebels are up by 12. Anna Marsalek slips the pass to Bates and she knocks down a three from the wing as Champlain Park seems ready to put it away leading by 15. But Blaine fights back. Off the inbounds play, Molly Garber banks it in as the Bengals cut the deficit to single digits. But Champlain Park holds the lead. Bates gets the steal. Her layup attempt misses but Holman follows it up Champlain Park wins 67-56. They are now 8-8. Eight eight. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. 
Thanks, Jay. One other note from girls basketball. Congratulations goes out to Maple Grove head coach Mark Cook for winning his 300th career game Thursday as the Crimson beat Totino Grace. Maple Grove is 10-0 in the Northwest Suburban Conference this season. The Champlain Park boys swimming and diving team is battling through some illness right now. The Rebels played host to Elk River Thursday. Here again is Jay Wilcox. Champlain Park set to host Elk River and Northwest Suburban Conference boys swimming. In the 200 medley relay, Elk River and anchor Hunter Wolsensky raced to the win in a time of 154.54. Coming in second is Champlain Park's team anchored by Gavin Head, a little over seven seconds back. In the 200 freestyle, it's Elk River's Matthew Katkov edging his teammate Liam Nelson for the top spot. Then Champlain Park's Evan Gustafson touches ahead of Derek Lodermeyer of Elk River for third. The 50 freestyle is a good race for the Rebels as Captain Nick Jacobs wins in a time of 23.70, but it's Elk River winning the meet 99.79. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.